Welcome to Ra Online. Today's topic is puerperal sepsis. Puerperal sepsis is defined as infection of the genital tract occurring between the rupture of membranes or labor or until 42nd day postpartum or with two of the following pelvic pain, pyrexia, oral temperature 38.5 degree Celsius or higher on any occasion, abnormal vaginal discharge, presence of pus or discharge with foul odor, Delay in the rate of reduction of size of uterus called as sub-involution. So, the uterus involutes at the rate of less than 2 cm per day during the first 8 days. Now, what are the risk factors for puerperal sepsis? We have antipartum risk factors and we have intrapartum risk factors. The antipartum or the before the onset of labor risk factors for puerperal sepsis are young maternal age or teenage pregnancies, nulliparity, anemia, obesity, diabetes, patients on immunosuppressants, preterm labor, colonization of group B streptococcus and history of pelvic infection. The intrapartum factors which increase the likelihood of puerperal sepsis include prolonged labor, multiple cervical examinations, prolonged rupture of membranes or chorioamniitis, vaginal trauma, cesarean section, operative vaginal delivery like forceps or ventus, wound hematoma, manual removal of placenta or retained products of conception. What are the common microorganisms causing puerperal sepsis? We can divide them as aerobic and anaerobic. Among the aerobic microorganisms, we have gram-positive group A, B, D. We have streptococci, enterococci, staphylococcus aureus, staphylococcus epidermidis. Among the gram-negative aerobic bacteria, we have E. coli, proteus, clipsilla, neisseria, gonorrhea. Coming to the anaerobic bacteria causing childbed fever, we have Peptostreptococcus, Clostridium, Bacteroides, Fusobacterium, Mobilincus and other microorganisms responsible for bacterial vaginosis like Gardenilla vaginalis, Mycoplasma and also Chlamydia and anaerobe can cause puerperal sepsis. <laughs>